What? I'm still working. Oh. Well, what are you doing? I've got to change the oil in this truck. Would you like to video me doing that? I suppose since I'm already fucking here. All right. You guys want to see a lot of oil change? <laughs> it's not hash oil, but we would like it to be. <laughs> oh, well, no. This is a 2014 Kenworth Long Hood W900. A 650 ISX Cummins motor. With a big old fuel filter on it. See that thing? That, that I'd just say that's a big motherfucker there. I think that's another fuel filter. That might be an oil filter though. Too, who knows? Who knows? I know. That's fuel. That's fuel. Oh, well, they're both fuel then. Okay. Those are both fuel filters. That other one on the inside looks more like an oil filter, but I ain't saying it isn't. Or it is. He just verified that it was a fuel filter, so. Hard to argue with a man who changes them all the time. Okay, that was kind of interesting. Caught my attention. These big old ass radiators. They're a big fan for you. Big ugly tire. All right, guys, <laughs> cut out there for a second. Like to pay his tire? What? You'd rather what? I'd rather pay my own tire bill than his monthly tire bill. Of course. Those tires are probably six hundred, hundred dollars a piece. Eight hundred dollars a piece, Rick. Holy shit. Yeah, that's a lot of money for a tire. But I guess if you're making fucking seven or eight hundred dollars a run every time you do uh, it, making money. They, these trucks average about a thousand dollars a day is what the truck averages. Okay, so you run for eighteen days, you pretty much have paid for your fucking tires. Roughly. There are eighteen wheelers. Well, I don't know if it's technically log trucks or eighteen wheelers or not, but you got 18 wheels. Oh, well, there you go. Actually, it's got 19. Oh, 19, okay, 19. You gotta count the steering wheel. Oh, <laughs> fucking. Jeff and his technical shit. But this is kind of funny. We've got a, a, a name here, River City Rock Products. And it's a log truck. What the fuck's up with that? <laughs> You'd think it'd be River City Wood Products or something. I'm working on heading over there. That's kind of a cool thing. Do to do. do. Mm. But what the truckers do to their rigs? Oh, there's another matching one over here. Of course there is. Oh, this must be the oil filter of some sort. He put a hole in an oil filter. What the hell did he do that shit for? Because I'm changing that oil filter. This oil filter. You see it draining out right there. Huh. You drain the oil out of them to prevent having a big mess. These well, I filters, know this. Rick, these filters hold little over a gallon of oil. Oh, yeah. And they make a big mess. Yeah. Well, yeah, I would suppose so. And they're probably not that light trying to unscrew them off there either when they're full. There's a new one right there. If you want to see how heavy it is. Well, I'm saying when it's full of oil, it's probably heavier than shit. It's, well, they're not that heavy for... With them empty, no. no, for the size they are, they're not that heavy. Yeah, Rick, I don't want to get against your wife. No problem. Yeah, this this ugly red shirt that's covered in grease and dirt would look pretty bad on this thing. <laughs> trying to see what he's doing here. He's trying to break that. Oh, he had the big wrench. Oh, here I am, leaning up against the fucking tires. Well, at least it's only a three dollar white shirt, right? Right. Simple fruit of the loom. Ooh. At least they're long. You can catch them when they start sliding down. Oh, this is me off. Oh, and Jeffy made a mess. I don't never make mess like that when I'm changing the oil. <laughs> yeah, but look at the size of the tank they got down there for draining the oil into. This engine holds 11.2 gallons of oil. Yeah, we're talking gallons here, people, not quarts. Your average vehicle carries what? Five to eight quarts? Your depending average on the vehicle. vehicle, your average four cylinder holds five quarts of oil. Yeah. But then a V8's like. The V8 goes to the six quarts. Oh, six? Ooh. Mm -hmm. And then six quarts is just barely over a gallon, so. That is on a gas engine. Yeah. 
Diesels are... Now, like my brother Jerry's pickup, he's got a 2008 Dodge with a Cummins in it. It holds three gallons. Yeah. I Still was just... big difference from this Cummins motor yeah. to a pickup's Cummins motor. Well, this, this Cummins motor, you put it into the front end of a fucking pickup truck, the thing would run down the road like this. No, you'd have to put these kind of springs on it. Yeah, because it would just drag itself on the ground. It wouldn't. That fucking... engine, the engine by itself, probably weighs as much as a pickup itself by itself. That engine itself <laughs> weighs sixty three hundred pounds, with no extremities on it. That's as much as a fucking pickup alone. That's as heavy as my Ford four wheel drive. Yeah, and I'm putting one of these in my pickup, but I'm putting the smaller one in my pickup. Yeah, not this one. Even the motorhomes have these great. You gotta realize, things. people, that's Jeff's f- philosophy for every vehicle. He gets a brand he, big engine. He would buy a brand new fucking car off the lot, drive it off the lot, and a mile down the road, he'd say, "Need a different engine, better Need transmission." More power. Need more power. This this guy doesn't know when to leave well enough alone. I'm telling you, but it's all right. He's allowed to have his fantasies. Whether they ever come to fruition or not, I doubt, but I've seen a few of his I'm, cocktail moments, like a 280Z with a fucking 5.0, 302-liter Mustang engine in it. That didn't fare very well. Didn't. It did, but it didn't until it crashed. Fuck. They couldn't manage to get the steering quite right, so it kind of well, locked the them up. We got it right on the 240. Oh, well. Yeah, but then what's your what's your friend's name fucking flipped it or something, didn't he? No, it caught on fire on the drag strip. Oh, well, there you go. That I helps. flipped the 280. That's the one that got flipped. Well, if a car catches on fire, that's definitely a problem somewhere. Yeah. I'll bet you that the fuel line was probably a little close to the exhaust. <laughs> or the exhaust is a little too close to something flammable. <laughs> The exhaust was too close to the fuel line, not the fuel line being too close to the exhaust. Oh, oh, that might be the case, too. Either one of those is not a good combo. I don't care what anybody says. No, I don't I, I don't know why it caught on fire. It backfired through the injection <coughs> and burned up. Yeah. Yeah. Shit like that happens when you try... Switching things around and changing yeah, man. things up, that man. wasn't why, Rick. I know it. Not me. always, but it happens a lot when you switch things up. Well, it's like people There's... say, like my Uncle Don's Ford truck, my Uncle Don's little Ford pickup. Yeah. With that Cummins in it. Yeah. He, oh, I've got eighty thousand dollars into it. You know what that pickup's worth? Probably twelve, fifteen, maybe. Fifteen hundred. No, it's, it's still a 73 Ford four-wheel drive yeah, but three-quarter uh, ton. Yeah, but he's got it done up nice. And it don't matter. It, yes, it does. For that age of a pickup truck, there's classics now, if, and they're up in price. What I'm getting at is if that pickup was all 100% bone stock original, it would be, and, and as nice as it is now, it'd be worth twice the money than what it is right now. Probably. Because it's all stock. Yeah. Now, if it was stock and original, <laughs> original stock. If that was the original motor in that truck, it'd be, it'd be a fluke. Well, and it'd be worth a lot of money. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to get out of. It's original engine, original paint, original everything, except for maybe your wear and tear parts like brakes and <laughs> filters and that kind of shit. I mean, who in their right mind would keep the fucking same brakes on it from a 1973 unless you didn't drive it at all and put it into a grandpa's fucking... It's got disc brakes all the way around it right now. Yeah. Here in about two weeks, I'm going to go over and put a rear end under it that has air brakes on it. It will well, not no longer have hydraulic brakes. We're going to put air brakes on that little truck. Yeah. And these are the these are the, I mean this is this is not little play around type of equipment here. We're dealing with large. I mean this is larger than an eight lug. Let's see, uh, ten lug. I got a log truck that's eight lug. That's a small log truck probably with an eight lug on it. No, no. Really? 
Well, there's all kinds of repair videos on on YouTube that deal with cars, but not very many that deal with large trucks, big wow. rigs like this. Next time I get ready to do brakes and so forth, you're going to have to come over a video when we can do a good video. Would you guys like to see videos on working on uh, truck brakes so you can see how air brakes work? There's a lot of different things on trucks. And that's a big funnel. That's a big orange funnel there. It's, uh, orange funnel. I mean, that's big. My hand can fit inside that son of a bitch. Boom. But I mean, he's going to be pouring gallons and gallons of shit into this. So now he's going to be smart. He's going to take this out, this Bundy cord. And make sure that fucker don't want to fall out of there on him when he starts pulling, pouring oil into it. And it's got a little hose on the bottom here. You can see that he's done so it goes right into where he needs to. So be smart about it. Work smarter, not harder, I always say. Yeah, could you ima imagine people pouring gallons of liquid into that little tiny hole behind all this shit? Yeah, oh, this, is, this is the way to go. Unless you have an actual hose with a pump on it, like this thing over here, to be able to wheel over there. Now, if you had this 55-gallon drum on wheels, that actually might work. It'd still be hard to pick up there and dump the oil out of it. Jeff, I'm talking with the fucking hose and the pump, you smart ass. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't think you'd manage to be able to pick that 55-gallon drum up about fucking make your asshole pucker. I don't think two of us could pick it up. We might be able to move it. Sonny and I pick them up and set them in the pickup. Uh, that's a heavy son of a bitch. 55 <laughs> gallons. Sonny there. and I can put them in the pickup, just the two of us, but it's a fucking chore. Uh, uh, you don't need any ropes or anything to help you? I don't know, to keep it from falling on your fucking toes. Well, there's 10 gallon of oil you're going to pour into it. See, the tire isn't just used to go down the road. It's used for a support, too. You can set things on top of it when you're working on the fucking truck. This is where being a short person sucks. Yeah, see, he's not... He's barely taller than the bucket standing on this thing. Me, I'm, I'm. This is pretty much level with me. <laughs> See, he, need, he almost needs a, something to stand on there. Up, oh, he made a little mess. He's on the intake. Oh well, though. Gluggy, gluggy. Oh shit! What are you doing? What's wrong? Move, move, move. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it might help to turn off the fucking... Oh, look at that, guys. That's a trick. No worrying about the fucking... Undoing it. It's just a fucking pickcock valve. Turn a valve and... All of my long Drain your oil. I know, but most vehicles that you go um, to, you gotta put a wrench on the side. Actually, we've bitch. got one in the fleet that don't have that. But not very many log truck operators have those on their truck for the simple reason they're afraid of it flipping open in the woods by a stick hitting a lever. Yeah, that would Dump be... Dump all the oil underground, and then you have a $50,000 fuck-up. <laughs> that would be a bad thing. You know what actually would be better on that, then, if that's the case? Have an actual turn valve on it where you have to turn it two or three times all the way around to open the valve up so they come open worse than those do really yeah ask your brother thomas really why you're is fucking that your bernie's motor up because you fucking had one of them uh like a hose valve on there yeah you know, a hose uh, yeah. valve and he hit his run it down the stick and it opened that fucker all the way up and started dumping oil out of the motor that, you gotta flip it a little bit and turn it 
It's got a lock on it. Oh, if it's got a lock easy. thing, then that's that's that works. That's if it's got a locking mechanism to keep it from. Yeah, this is not an advertisement for Conoco or 76 people. It just happens to be the ugly buckets we have. <laughs> we'll see if uh, I don't get monetized or not. And if we don't, if we get a monetized, uh, monetized dink against us, we'll have to put tape across that so we don't fucking advertise for people. It'd be kind of chicken shit. That's the way YouTube works. If somebody well, doesn't want you fucking advertising their shit, you gotta cover it up. That's just the way they are. Otherwise, you don't make money. If uh, partial owner of Conoco and distributor of Conoco says that it can be on our YouTube videos, we can have it on there, correct? I, if okay. you can prove I'll I'll that you own... I'll talk to my boss. I mean, you have to send in paperwork and all kinds of boss. shit. Well, he's, he's, part, yeah. he's part into Conoco, too. It's amazing what this whole fart's into. I don't think we lost too much oil down there, Jeff. Well, it don't matter. I got more. I know you do, but I'm just saying. It sure was flowing in easy when it was fucking draining out of the bottom, wasn't it? <laughs> I was wondering why it was going faster than it normally does. <laughs> like, it's going in that funnel pretty goddamn we quick. We lost about a gallon. And that actually, Probably. actually, that does not hurt anything. No, it helps flush it out a little it better, I think. It flushes some stuff out, yes. Any particulates that were hanging down at the bottom, it just picks them right up, right out the hole they go. But my engines are so clean, we don't worry about that. <sighs> yeah. Actually, it is relatively clean. You gotta remember, this truck's been running all week too. Yeah. Well, I know the the drivers watch these on a regular basis. No, they don't. Our drivers don't watch them. Well, we have a we actually have a wash company that comes out every Saturday, and they wash thirteen log trucks. Is what we have. We have all all Kenworths. At this point, if any of you guys have ever wondered what this unit is on the side of the vehicle, on a big truck, that's an air filter for their air intake. And they get changed pretty regularly, about probably every six months or so. How often do you change the air filters? We blow them out once a year, and we change them every two years. Oh, well, there you go. They are big. I mean, that's, that's a large air filter compared to what you would see in a normal vehicle. I mean, considering the size of a normal air filter is about the size of the top of this five-gallon bucket. <laughs> and they're only about that thick. <laughs> not, 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 not the tire thickness, but that thick with if my fingers. If you want to see what an air filter is, there is an elf air filter for oh. a 3406 cat. There's a big air filter for a cat right there. That is a big puppy. But these things run 24 hours. A lot of trucks run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This so. truck run 520 miles today. <laughs> That's quite a ways. So at and least, it does it every day. At least on an a, average of 450 to now 500. Is this just oil too? Or yes, is it, okay. this is just oil. I thought maybe this was an additive you were putting in. Nope. Do you have any additives you put into the oil? No. Okay. I don't run any additives. 